Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education uh, meeting for April the 3rd. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to the negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Do I have a second to the motion? Second. Okay, all in favor of going to closed session? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, we'll be back at 6 p.m. Good evening, welcome to Queen Anne's County April 3rd Board of Education meeting. I'd like everyone stand for the pledge. If you could remain standing afterwards in honor of our troops overseas and at home and our first responders. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Thank you, everyone. Oh. I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to amend the uh, agenda to include an executive closed session at the end of our open meeting. I have a motion to uh, amend the agenda to include a closed executive closed session at the end of this open meeting. Do I have a second? Right, we have a motion and a second. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Motion okay. is carried. Motion carries. Uh, so I need an amendment to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the amenda as agenda, the agenda as amended. This is right. Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Corset? Yes. I have three and four in the affirmative motion carried. It is approved. Now I need a motion to approve the minutes for closed session on February, on, uh, I'm sorry, for open session February 13th, open and closed sessions March 6th and March 20th. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mrs. Wright. Yes. 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 Okay, we have recognitions. Excellent. So we have some recognitions tonight. So if board members will join me up front. some really exciting recognitions tonight and we will start with the difference maker award so tonight's difference maker award goes to mr alexander kovac mr kovac please come on down where's mr come on down So Mr. Kovac is a paraprofessional at Kent Island High School. Mr. Kovac was nominated by Madison Williams, an 11th grade student at Kent Island High School. Uh, and here is what she had to say about Mr. Kovac. I think he is a kind, patient, and adored teacher at Kent Island High School. He works with special needs children, which is a very challenging position, especially when some of the students can't even talk and struggle with conveying their simplest needs, whether academic or emotional. Remarkably, Mr. Kovac still finds a way to communicate with them to meet those needs. Despite his demanding job, he comes in every day with a positive attitude and a smile on his face, ready for the day. 
Mr. Kovac works daily with his students to guide them to success. My autistic brother, and this is from um, uh, Madison, my autistic brother, Kennedy Williams, looks forward to attending school every morning to be with him. Every time he leaves Mr. Kovac's classroom, Kennedy always surprises our family with something new that he can say or do. For example, Mr. Kovac encouraged Kennedy to play unified tennis and unified weightlifting, even when Kennedy was hesitant to do so. Mr. Kovac even persuaded Kennedy, who is very stubborn about uh, what he wants to eat and to try new foods uh, at the Thanksgiving feast, he, ha uh, he did that, and which Mr. Kovac had for his students. Mr. Kovac is not just a special education teacher, but, or a special teacher, I should say, but an amazing person to all. My family and many others are so thankful that Kennedy and other students have the privilege to be taught by such an outstanding teacher who always goes above and beyond. It warms my heart to see the dedication and love he shares with his students. Mr. Kovac is definitely a difference maker. Please join me in congratulating Mr. Kovac. So, Mr. Kovac, who have you brought with you tonight? Um, I, I have brought my father, Al Kovac, my mother, Kayleen Kovac, Cindy Williams, Madison Williams, and Wendell Williams. Excellent. So we're going to ask everyone to come forward and... Oh, I'm sorry, and my principal, John Absolutely. Come forward. <laughs> And we'd also like to recognize um, Kennedy. Kennedy, we have a certificate for Kennedy. Is Kennedy, he's not here? OK, so we will give this to his sister, right, to hold for him. So that is for you and for you, Mr. Kovac. You're quite welcome. And we also have a couple of gifts for you. Our next recognition is the Shining Star Award. And that award goes to the Queen Anne's County Public Schools employee who shines. Tonight's recipient of the Shining Star Award is Mr. Daniel Miller from Suttlersville Elementary School. Please come forward. <laughs> Mr. Miller was nominated by his principal, Mr. Walls. And this is what he had to say about Daniel Miller. Daniel Miller is a teacher who works at Sellersville Elementary School and is certainly the face of everything that is positive at our small school with a big heart. Throughout the day, Mr. Miller is called upon to offer assistance at every level within the building, whether it's providing instructional lessons to our students, professional development to our staff, IEP assistance, delivering instruction to non-English speaking students, or simply comforting a distressed child. Mr. Miller is a leader in every sense. Mr. Miller adds so much value to our school and community in so many other ways. He is a go-to person when students, teachers, families, and other stakeholders need assistance or questions answered. And he provides the highest level of professional support. Not just Suttlersville Elementary students and staff uh, that rely on him for assistance, but when other departments need answers, he's the first person they turn to as well. For example, Mr. Miller works very closely with Mrs. Susan Walbert at the board office in the area of migrant education. And it is often said, if you want something done, just ask the busiest person you know, and it'll get done, and SES oftentimes that is Mr. Miller who gets it done. So we'd like to thank you, Mr. Miller. Who do you have with you tonight? I have my wonderful wife, Elizabeth Miller, uh, my mother-in-law, Joanne Nelson, uh, all of my colleagues from Suttlersville Elementary School, uh, my principal, Mr. Walls, 
Uh, you know what? They, I don't know if I brought them. They just showed up. So I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, Miss Janet Pauls, Miss Lisa Davis, uh, Miss Amanda Enzer, um, all, all these folks I've worked uh, very closely with, uh, Miss Susan Walbert as well. Uh, so thank you very much for, for attending tonight. And so we're going to ask you to come on forward. You know how it works. Come on, family. And our final uh, recognition tonight is the Energizer Bunny Award. So I am going to ask that Mr. Chip Brittingham and Wayne Humphreys come forward. And this is also on behalf of Mark Humphreys from Bayview Financial, our wonderful sponsors. So tonight's Energizer Bunny Award uh, recognizes Mrs. Amanda Enzer. Mrs. Enzer, come on down. Now, if you know uh, Mrs. Enzer, you know that she is the definition of energized, always coming up with different methods of helping her students and colleagues and jumping rope at the same time. Mrs. Enzer started in the position of Title I Parent and Family Engagement Specialist about five months ago, but in that short amount of time, she has worked diligently to support and engage our Title I families. She's created a Dad's Advisory Club, provided professional development to teachers on effective parent conferences. She's introduced family-inclusive language, and she's worked with families individually to build the bridge between home and school, just to name a few. Mrs. Enzer makes connections with families immediately and in such a natural way. She works whenever the families, staff, and students need her support, which can be early in the morning or very late at night. Providing these supports to families, students, and staff in the Title I schools is why Mrs. Enzer is such a good choice for the Energizer Bunny Award. So we'd like to congratulate you, Mrs. Enzer. And who do you have with you tonight? I have my dear husband, Luke Enzer, <laughs> and my wonderful supervisor, Susan Walbert, and then one of my principals from Southern Hill Elementary is here as well, Mr. Walls. So we're going to ask them all to come on down. And I was remiss in giving Madison, I have a certificate for Madison as well. Congratulations, Madison. And we have one very special, uh, the final award tonight is a very, very special award and probably a, a bit of a surprise. So let me just give you a little bit of background, then I'm going to ask some folks to come forward. We have an employee in our school system uh, who is going to celebrate her 90th birthday on April the 21st. She manages the uh, in-school suspension room at Centerville Middle School, um, and she provides coverage for classes if needed, and most definitely encouragement and counseling to all of the students at Centerville Middle School. She has faithfully served for 47 years. And that special young lady is Miss Mary Comages. Miss Comages uh, was, yeah, oh, co please come forward, Mr. Dunn. We've got several folks um, that are going to be coming forward. Uh, Miss Comages, come forward so that we can recognize you and thank you for your many, many years of service. 
congratulations. Thank you. Yep. Well, I knew Mrs. Commons several years ago through a lot of things, but I really got to know her last year. And this year, she's been a person. Not only does she help counsel students, she helps counsel staff, and because she has a lot of things to offer for us who hasn't been around as long. And I want to thank her for all her time and energy that she puts into Centerville Middle School. She shows up daily, and we really appreciate that. And not only does she show up daily, she's coming from Bridgeville, Delaware. So that's a long commute. Um, Mr. Reginald Rhines, who's one of our staff members at Centerville Middle School, really made the effort because he saw something that we should do something a little bit extra. And I'm going to have him come forward this time to share a little bit about why he felt Mrs. Commages should have been recognized. <laughs> I just want to say, to Mrs. Commages, uh, she stood out in my eyesight, in my mind. First of all, to see her a person of her years, still active, still very active. She, I've, I've heard her counsel some of the hard cases. And I've seen some of those hard cases calm down, come into line. She has been an inspiration and a blessing. And I'm one of the hard cases. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you have some folks here you want to come up and introduce, don't you? Yes. All right. First of all, would the Centerville Middle School staff come on up? Come on, Libby. You got to be in the picture, too. And who did you want to introduce? My daughter, Debbie. My grandson, Jimmy. My daughter-in-law, Debbie. And my son, Jimmy. Would you come on up, please? And my uh, great-granddaughter. And her husband in the back there. Come on forward, please. All right. Now, Dr. Kane, you had a proclamation you wanted to read, right? So, in light of this very special lady, I know, right? I really do. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Ryans is awesome. So in light of this very special lady, we have a special proclamation today. So we are naming, designating April 21st as Miss Comagee's Day here in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And I have a proclamation that I like to read. Whereas, Miss Mary Ethel Comages began serving the children of Queen Anne's County Public Schools in the fall of 1972 and currently supports students and staff members at Centerville Middle School. Whereas Queen Anne's County Public Schools values the dedication, service, and commitment of its employees and community to the student achievement and well being. And whereas Mrs. Comages fills many roles at her school and goes by many names, including teacher, counselor, mentor, at school mom, grandmom, great grandmom. <laughs> Whereas all citizens are called upon to recognize Ms. Comages has contributed 47 years of dedicated service to Queen Anne's County Public Schools and celebrates her 90th birthday this month. And now, therefore, we, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County, do hereby proclaim and acknowledge April 21st, 2019 as Mrs. Comagee's day for her commitment, care, and lasting contributions to the lives of children and families served by Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And it is served by Captain Beverly Kelly, our board president, Ms. Tamara Harper, our uh, vice president, and myself. Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. 
Few diehards left, huh? <laughs> Staff, it's all left. Okay, next item on our agenda is the board involvement. Um, I, I uh, will start off that um, I wanted to uh, congratulate the superintendent. She presented uh, our budget needs to the commissioners this, um, this month, and she did a great job, um, made it very clear. Thanks to Mr. Fister for setting this whole thing up. Um, the presentation went very well. I think we're, we're trying to be extremely transparent to the county commissioners um, on our needs in the system. And we've pared it down. The, the budget is, is lean, mean, but necessary. So I think it's important that the public understand uh, we've gone forward with a budget we think we need, and we need support from the public, teachers, parents, staff, and the community members to help us uh, to get the commissioners to fund what we really believe is the right budget for our school system. Uh, there will be there will be commissioner uh, hearings held in different locations. I'll be saying that at the end of the meeting with um, all of the upcoming events that are going on. But it's very important, and they're throughout the county, so you all can attend one of those near you. Um, and it's important that you come and support us. Uh, not us, but support the school system, support the students of Queen Anne's County. So that was a, an important part uh, event that I went to, but I think it's important that you all understand how much work and, and honesty and transparency went into this <coughs> budget. Dr. Kane. Were there any other board members that wanted to say anything? I, I attended a few things. I've been very busy. Um, March 15th, I attended the Multicultural Night at Queens County High School along with Dr. Kane. Um, it, was, it was a great night. It was very well organized and attended. The students did a great job on their posters and their displays. The food was excellent. Um, it was nice to see that not only the students took an involvement, but their parents as well, preparing all the food and serving. Um, let's see, on the 27th of March, I got to chaperone for my son's seventh grade class at Sutlersville Middle. Uh, we went to the Baltimore Museum of Industry. I've never even heard of it until we went. It was very cool. The students got to experience uh, working on an assembly line, building a little car. Uh, they had to design a roller coaster that worked, and they took a tour where they learned about the oyster cannery. Um, in that particular building, they used to make the cans. Um, let's see. 
they got to learn about the blacksmiths that made all the machinery and kept it working. And they learned about the garment manufacturing. And Baltimore was actually the leading maker of umbrellas until about 1981. I didn't know that. Who knew? That was a neat little trip. Um, on the 29th, I attended the Southernsville Middle School production of Aladdin Jr. It was very well done. They had a lot of hard work that went into preparation, not only by the students, but the parents, the uh, staff at the school, the set design, the costumes, lots of moms, grandmoms apparently came together to make all the costumes. It was very cute, um, and I didn't mind singing along. My, my kids grew up on that movie, so. And then on April 1st, I attended the first middle school track meet that was held at Queens County High School. It was cold. But it, it was very cool. Southernsville Middle School, Stevensville, and Centerville Middle School all competed that day. And even though they were different teams, they cheered each other on. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I've had a fun one. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Okay, so it has been a, a busy month. I won't uh, go over everything that I did. I'll call out a few. Uh, we started the month out with our Teacher of the Year prize patrol. So that's always an exciting time. So we did our prize patrol in the beginning of the month. Uh, that was followed that following Saturday with the Upper Shore Regional History um, Fair. And that was just an outstanding program. Congratulations to Mr. Tolley and all of the folks that supported uh, that effort. So it was well attended. It was and our students do such an awesome job uh, with their, their history um, projects. And that was all of the Upper Shore students were there. So it was a wonderful, wonderful program over at Chess uh, Washington College. And then we um, did also the, um, the musicals and the multicultural night at Queen Anne's County. So Ken Island uh, did Mary Poppins, and that was a wonderful, wonderful performance. And then uh, The Little Mermaid at uh, Queen Anne's County High School was awesome. And we had the Ken Island High School Winter Sports Awards, and we also had the Ken Island High School uh, Science Honor Society uh, cer celebration or ceremony. So multiple things going on, just to, just to name a few. So it was a very busy month, and our kids are doing great great things. I do want to uh, say just a couple more things, though. You probably have seen in the news or in the newspaper, certainly Channel 13, Channel 2, uh, did stories on our students who are involved in our apprenticeship program, the Maryland Apprenticeship Program, as well as our CTE program. So we got a lot of recognition for that. Just a few school districts are involved with that across the state, and we are one of them. So we're looking to uh, enter our students into that for the upcoming school year. Lots of recognition there. Also. Stevensville Middle School and Ken Island High School were recognized for Project Lead the Way. So they have placed again uh, nationally and just students doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things. I'm so excited. So thank you. Thank you. Can we just shout out to Dr. Kane? She was recognized by Bowie State as one of the, I saw it in the newspaper today, and I think that is an, uh, just one, a wonderful honor and uh, how lovely. Thank you. And speaking of Bowie State, that was another event that we had. So last week we took 35 students to Bowie State and there were about 20 students who received their acceptances while we were there. Wow. So it was just a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, and the, the one that you were talking about was in recognition of Women's History Month in March and the five African-American female superintendents, which has not, never happened before in the state of Maryland. Okay, so Maryland. we were all recognized and they just treated us royally. So Fantastic. thank you. Mr. Kaliski. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. It has been a busy month. I'm only going to highlight two things. Um, one great opportunity that we had training recently, Dr. Kane, myself, Mr. Farley, and um, Mr. Angle attended the Equity Academy training at MABE, the Maryland Boards of Education. It was excellent. It was outstanding. We learned a lot, uh, and we've, we're going to incorporate some of the those um, things that we've learned uh, most recently with our administrators. The second thing, uh, on the 20th, I had the opportunity to represent uh, Dr. Kane as a superintendent at the Centerville Middle School Junior Honor Society. Uh, and that is always a great event, and it always reminds me that spring is here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
I also have some cards for our school board members um, from that Educational Equity Academy. And they wanted us to be sure to share. There are a couple of questions. There are five questions that as we talk about our programs and we look at our student data, uh, we want to be sure that we're looking at it through a lens of equity. And so they've given us some, some questions that you might want to ask whenever we're presenting and, and you have a question to keep us all focused on that equity element. So I'm going to make sure that you get these. Um, you can take one and pass it down. And thank you to everyone who attended that. that training. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next one is our student board member report. We'll start with Ms. Teddy. Hi, my name is Marissa Teddy. I represent Ken Island High School. At Ken Island High School, we are very proud of our extracurricular activities, specifically our nine national honor societies. So there will be many induction ceremonies throughout the month of April. Qualifications for membership are different for each honor society, so congratulations to those inducted. We commend your hard work and contribution to the school and community. National Technical Honor Society inductions will be held on April 9th. Art National Honor Society inductions on April 11th. National Honor Society inductions will be held on April 16th. And Math Honor Society inductions on April 29th. Last week on March 27th, students had a successful SAT testing day. Everything ran smoothly, and we thank the county and administrators for making that happen. End of third quarter is this Friday, April 5th. We will have an early dismissal running on a half-day schedule this Friday, April 5th. On April 11th, an event called Art Scene will take place from 5 to 8, 5 to 8 p.m. at Ken Island High School. Artwork from our feeder elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools will be featured. There will be crafts for kids, scholarships and awards presented, and artwork will be judged. On Friday, April 12th, it's Maryland Day. Our school counselors will be celebrating colleges throughout the state of Maryland, including University of Maryland, Towson, and Salisbury University. On April 25th, our annual presentation and performance of Prom Promise from the Students Against Destructive Decisions group. We are extremely grateful to, a, to the fire department and the SAD group for putting this together. On Friday, April 26th, is our Student of the Month ceremony. And on Saturday, April 27th, the prom dance will be held at Prospect Bay Country Club. Shout out to the class of 2019 student government members who have been working extremely hard to organize our prom events, making posters, <coughs> sending emails, and delivering invitations. We are very excited to see it all come together. Wow, we thought we were busy. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even talk about sports that time. <laughs> Miss Miles. Good evening, I'm Ariel Miles. Um, I represent Queen Anne's County High School. Um, first, before I start my report, I want to say how awesome it was to recognize Mrs. Commages today. Um, from experience, she has always been so kind and loving to me, and my mom, who's a teacher at Queen Anne, er, Centerville Middle School. Um, my mom would come home with bags of corn and fresh produce, tomatoes, even one time came home with a ham um, from Mrs. Commages. Um, so she's always been so sweet to us, so that was awesome that we could recognize her today. Um, class of 2021 will have a quarter auction that is being held Sunday, April 7th. Doors open at 1 o'clock and the auction will start at 2. We now have access to an app called the So Happy app that allows us to see the lunch menu along with nutritional information and um, allergens. So that's awesome. Um, last Thursday, the class of 2019 had their first baccalaureate meeting. Um, this event will take place May 29th, the night before graduation. Time is to be determined. April 9th, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Queen Anne's County High School is putting on an art exhibition. Come out and view some awesome art and enjoy some refreshments as well. On Thursday, April 25th at 9 a.m., seniors will be taking their photo in the shape of 2019 on the field. Um, last week, juniors were able to take the SATs during school free of charge. Um, and tomorrow, Queen Anne's County High School's track and field team will be hosting our annual Nesbitt Relays in honor of Mr. Charles Nesbitt and now in memory of Ms. Florestine Pickett, who are both track coaches at Queen Anne's County High School. And that will start at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Where is the quarter auction taking place? Um, at, in the auditorium at our high school. On Sunday? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Miles. Um, community participation. Is there anyone? <laughs> there's she over there. No. Have anyone signed up? No. Okay. Okay. Do I still need to read it? Okay, so not. Is there anyone who is going to come up? Okay. okay. We'll pass on that one. So we'll begin our presentation starting with the district calendar. Okay. So Mr. Brown is going to come forward. I'm going to come down there with him. Okay. Excuse me. 
So good evening, board members. Uh, for the record, Andrea Kane and Dave Brown. We're gonna talk about uh, the revision that we need to make to the 2018-19 district calendar. So we're starting this off. Um, we had three days embedded in our district calendar for inclement weather. We actually used four days in that calendar. So we needed to add another day of school. This year, at this at this point in the year, the only days that are the only day that was available to possibly use so that we didn't have to extend the school year was the day after Memorial Day. Last year, we sort of went through a little bit of um, searching around to see which days families would be interested in switching out, swapping out, because last year we needed to add additional days to our calendar. No one was interested in um, coming to school on that Monday after Memorial Day, so we didn't even put that back out there again this year. So the only day that we can um, go to school or extend that extra day is on June 17th. The school year would have ended on a Friday, but we don't have the luxury of any other days that are available for our use. There's the Friday and the Monday that surround um, Easter Sunday, and those days are not available for us to use. So with the passing of legislation last year that allowed school districts five days to use for inclement weather, we do not have to go to the Maryland State Department of Education for approval. School boards have the approval to uh, use those five days as they need to because of inclement weather and a few other um, catastrophic events. And so we are proposing June 17th to be a half day of school for, uh, to make up for the day that we went over for snow. And that is what you see in front of you today. Uh, is that, oh, we'll get that one for you. Should be on board docs. Yeah, it is. It's on board docs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you proposing this for all schools, including the high school, because the final exams will be done by that Friday? Yeah, and we don't differentiate days for the, it just, it'll be yeah, it's for the district. Okay. Yeah. So would that be used as an extra testing day for high school students? What, what, what we're actually doing is we are inserting a day prior to the last three days. So think about just moving the last three days of school over one day. Okay. So final exams would be moved one day over. Um, so it'll be Thursday, Friday, Monday. Thursday, Friday, okay. and Monday. And Monday's been a, a wake up, a make up day, right? It, right. It'd be a full day of make up, not just adding an extra half day to meet the needs. We would actually have a full day of school. Okay. Oh, I thought you said this was a half day. So that's the we're, we're inserting a full day and pushing the last three half days over. Right. So they'll have a full day on the, the, the 12th. The 12th will be a full day. For the high school. For high school, for all schools. Okay, for and all then schools. final exams for the high school would be that Thursday and Friday. And Monday. And Monday would be the makeup exam days for the high school and the last day of school for all okay. other schools. Okay. So all the students are supposed to be at school, not just the high school on Monday, the 17th? Correct. It will be okay. the last full day of school for everybody school in, school. in the okay. system. Okay. But it is going to be a half day. The last day Monday. of school will be a half day. Half yes. day the 17th. Okay, sorry, confusion. And, and we add language, and again, this is, is not the, 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 what we're actually presenting. Um, what we are presenting has language in there that does define the actual dismissal times for the schools. Uh, the last day will be a half day with the, the high schools closing at 12 o'clock and the tier two schools closing at one o'clock. Final exam days, we do need a little more time, so the high schools actually close at 1 o'clock, with the Tier 2 schools closing at 2 o'clock. What are you doing about the professional development on the 12th? So will you still make that a half day even though? That will still be a half day to the, to the 13th. It gets, the, those last three days just are pushed just out. just shifted over to the oh, right. Oh, so the professional day will also be? Yes. Got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I got gotcha yeah, now. Half day PD day. For gotcha, got, thank up. you. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. And that is an item we need to vote on approval. We'll need to vote on that, and we sh that should be on the agenda. Okay. Are you going to go to the other calendar revisions now? So, so what we're, we're proposing, and you in board docs, you do have uh, some proposed calendars there. So last week, I believe on uh, March 29th, the... Let me digress. Do we yes. need to do right now a vote for this calendar? You're going to do it in during action items. 
Okay, thank you. So since we're, since we're here, we just want to share some things that are coming forward just so that you're aware and the public is aware of what's getting ready to happen. So on March 29th, uh, the general session was in and it was voted that uh, school districts would have the authority to determine whether or not they would start before Labor Day or after Labor Day. And that would be effective for the coming school year. So what we plan to do is we plan to put a survey out to our families so that they can have some input and we can gather information about what it is the families uh, prefer to do, a pre-Labor Day start or a post-Labor Day start. There's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, comments and all of that. We just really want to know, do folks want to start school before or after? Our calendar committee is getting to work already on proposing calendars. We do have a mock-up of a pre-Labor Day start and a post-Labor Day start that will be embedded in the survey just so that families can see. And it really is not about any of the other days that are in that calendar. This really is all about do families want to start before Labor Day or after Labor Day. The uh, calendar committee will come back together and they will make any adjustments that they need to make to the calendar based on the results of this very short survey that we would like to administer. And based on that, we're going to come back to the school board at the May meeting, we hope, and, um, and present some proposals to you for 2019-20 to 20 calendars for the district. So at that time, you'll make a vote on that. Because as you know, we currently have an approved calendar for 1920. But because of this legislation, we want to see if families would like to make a change to that calendar that we've already approved, because now we can start before or after. I guess the only problem I have with that is that this is not to drive, you know, not to make a decision, but this is a planned calendar that folks maybe have planned a week vacation at the end of August. And my concern is if we end up with you know, like the, a majority rule situation, I'm not quite sure that's fair. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I've thought through this. Yeah. Now, now this will be the law forever, well, for now. And so, I mean, for the brand new calendar of 2020, 21, then, you know, we can clearly address that then. But I think it's important to keep that in mind when we're making a decision based on the input you get, because <laughs> Some people have gone and some people vacations. do. Yeah, some people have expressed that to me, yeah. and some other folks are like, "Thank goodness, now we can." You know, so it's both sides. And before we make a proposal to you, we want to make sure that we are hearing from our our families. So that's why we put that out there. And it could very well be that we say leave 1920 as it is and focus on the years after that. So that's always an option. Okay. Well, I'm just as concerned about the June 17th closing date. People have vacations scheduled for that, too. That's, true. That's a lot shorter notice for them. And so we're going to school the last three days, just half days, and we can't combine that and do a full day to, in order to not come back on Monday. We I are mean, required to do 180 school days. Just and combined so half days does ridiculous. not equal not the whole it. day. And the high school students, they, they have, traditionally have half days anyway, those last three days for, you know, the freshman, sophomore, and junior. So that's, that's a given. They have to be there. Yeah. And it was important that uh, everyone know, the public and our families know, that this decision just came down on Friday. So this is not something that we've held on to. This decision was just made. So as soon as we about found out, we put it in front of the, everybody. The start date, but not about this end date. Um, well, the end date's always been, it's always been on our calendar. We always, it's on our calendar. We have three days embedded and we specifically, yeah, we specifically say on the calendar that if we use more than the three snow days that we'll go into, if additional snow days are used, school will be extended into the week of June 17th through 21st. So that's always been on the calendar. Was there ever, was there a waiver request? No, there is no waiver to be requested. That's what the five days are for. So that is what it is. Did someone, anyone have any other questions? And when we get to the action item, we will vote on the, the approval of the extended day for the non-approval. 
for this particular year. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is um, the Kerwin blueprint for the Maryland future up this future update being presented to us by Mr. Fister. So thank you, Mr. Fister is going to share with us some um, more current updates since, since general session is in. And this update also is in from just last week. So thank you, Mr. Fister. Thank you, Dr. King, Captain Kelly, members of the board. Um, this just want to give you a brief little update as to where we are um, with what we are calling the blueprint for Maryland's future. Um, as you know, the legislation changed that from the current commission to the blueprint. You'll see the word blueprint throughout this presentation, um, but it does summarize. Um, exactly what we're looking forward to seeing in funding related to not only fiscal year 20, but also fiscal year 21. So the purpose tonight is just basically to give you an update, examine some of the blueprint um, priorities and focus areas, and then uh, a brief little impact of what it will mean for us. Uh, so as far as the Kerwin Commission, you saw this in my earlier presentation, you know, it was back from 2016. It was centered around some framework from the National Center on Education and Economy. In 2018, there was a $200 million down payment for FY20. We'll hear about that shortly. The interim report, there is a link there for the public. Anybody who wants to see it, it is the interim report, January 2019, for the Kerwin Commission. And under this new legislation, the final report is due uh, to the legislature December 31st, 2019, in time for next legislative session so that you can uh, imagine some policy and some legislation is going to um, come out of that report as well. So the blueprint for Maryland's future uh, it is currently as House Bill 1413 or cross-filed with Senate Bill 1030. It passed the Senate with amendments from the original bill. It passed the House with amendments from the original bill. When you have two amendments, uh, two different houses with different amendments, they have to come together in a conference committee to work on unifying the bill. The expected vote is this week. Uh, I got something earlier this morning. They were expecting the Senate to vote on it today. Um, but with the board meeting and everything, I haven't had a chance to get an update there. So very possible pass the Senate today. Then it moves to the House Ways and Means Committee, which could be today or tomorrow. Uh, just a reminder, session ends April 8th. So this will be passed in some form uh, within the next few days. This was just kind of a uh, snapshot of where they started. So the House version started off with funding Kerwin with $325 million. And then next year, was, that was going to escalate up to $750 million. The Senate came in with its version, $225 million, and then a smaller target for uh, 2021 of $345 million. Now, as you can imagine, there, we, we landed somewhere probably in the middle. Next year, we will land somewhere in the middle. But as I just mentioned, this is a moving target still until it is actually codified in law. So where did we end up? We ended up right now with a $255 million funded initiative for next year. Um, and concentration of poverty school grant program, supplemental pre-K, teacher collaborative grants, um, establishing the Maryland Office of Inspector General, yeehaw, I get another auditor to come look at me. Uh, performance audit, yeehaw, I got another auditor coming to look at me. Uh, the salary, teacher salary incentive grant, mental health and transitional supplemental instruction. The bold face in, uh, indicates the four things out of this funding priority that does have an impact on Queen Anne's County Public Schools and we'll explain them here shortly. This is just a little snapshot of uh, exactly what's in the bill that's being uh, approved hopefully today or tomorrow and what makes up the $255 million and the dollars assigned with each one of those. Full day, special ed, the transitional, the mental health, so on and so forth. So as far as the impact for us, what does that mean? So for the full day pre-kindergarten, we're estimating about $215,000 will come to our district to help us expand or pay for the pre-kindergarten full day that we have. Uh, I believe we have two, two units at Southersville and one at Church Hill. Um, this is their first attempt to get the students that are pre-K in the student enrollment counts. As you, you know, we've talked about in budget session, we have a pre-kindergarten program. We do not get any state or local funding for those. It's all on us. So this is that, again, we'll call it down to payment. 
I put the red restrictions up there. I don't want to use the term restricted. I want to put the term restrictions. So there are some funding restrictions, priorities, recommendations from the Kerwin Commission based on this. So it isn't something that we can just take this money and go do whatever we want to do with it. We, we're, you know, it's an intended to expand these exact programs. And uh, I believe that's through the board and the superintendent is what we will plan to do going forward. With the special edu uh, education grants, it's approximately $392,000. Per law, it says this is to fund, to fully implement any IEPs or 504 plans for students with disabilities. And if there's any leftover funding from that, then we implement all the recommendations made by the Kerwin Commission. And again, that's the restriction being put on these funds as they come through um, that we will see them next year. The teacher salary incentive grant. It's the state supplemental, and I'll use the term matching funds. It is for teachers only. The priority here is to focus it on starting teacher salaries or give consideration to starting teacher salaries and salaries for teachers with less than five years of teaching experience. We must certify that we provide at least a 3% salary increase before being eligible for additional state funding. Uh, the state has yet to develop that form and we have an idea of what's going to need to be included. But that certification must be to MSDE and back to us before June 30th. And the importance there is as we get into the May and June, hopefully only May, reconciliation with our budget, depending on what our final funding amount is, we, we have a deadline where we need to submit this certification to MSDE so that we're not behind the eight ball when we come to July 1 when these new salaries that we've just negotiated have to be put in place. So we want to make sure that we're timely with our reconciliation so that we can meet this important deadline. Mental health coordinator, again, $83,333. Every county in the state got the same amount, and it is to hire a full-time mental health services coordinator. So we will be adding an FTE uh, to your, the budget as we go through reconciliation process. <coughs> And then lastly, the transitional supplemental instruction, $133,820. Again, the restriction is to address the needs of struggling learners in grades K to 3, such as one-on-one -on -one and small group tutoring with a certified teacher, teaching assistant, or trained professional. So this isn't necessarily something that could be turned into a software license. All of this still requires the governor to release the $200 million of the FY 2019 <laughs> set-aside down payment funding. Um, with the inspector general in this bill and perhaps the performance audit, some of those things uh, that I know he's been advocating for, hopefully this money will be released. But again, it's still all contingent. That's where part of this down payment money comes from. And I believe if that doesn't happen, then that money becomes mandated in 2021. So once this bill gets uh, through its courses, and then the governor does what he needs to do. Hopefully, we'll be in good shape moving forward. 2021 or 2020? For, for it to be funded in 2020, this $200 million needs to be released. If the governor, for some reason, does not release these funds, the law states that those funds would then mandate it to be released in 2021. So there could be a delay. So this is not 20, this is the budget we're working on now? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, I'm sorry. I got yes. that. So, and just a, a quick little reminder, the 2019 legislation ends on April 8th, so we should see something very soon. So what's next? So we'll have some budgetary decisions on our part um, as we see what these final numbers come through. Uh, the current commission and the legislature certainly will work on long-term policy, um, as I think we've all been updated on, and funding formula changes, which will probably affect our FY21 budgets as far as our standard funding formulas. You know, they couldn't do all of that work, both a policy and a funding formula change during the 90-day session. So they've pushed that off. That's why the report was delayed to December 31st. Um, so we'll see that. Um, most certainly, we'll see some funding formula changes uh, for our 2021 budget. And then expect more Kerwin legislation next year as these policies get developed, implemented, rolled out, the future outlook budget outlooks, you know, whether the state has a structural deficit going forward and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of work. Just because this bill gets passed doesn't mean our Kerwin work is by any means far from over. And with that, take some questions, if you have any. The full day kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, 
that's just for the students that we normally accept into that program anyway. It's not extra students. It's not everybody. It's going to be based the same way it always has. We're just making the ones that qualify full day. For full day. day. Yes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And it did pass the Senate today 43 to 1. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to know who the one vote was. I think it's import important to um, emphasize, I think, is the earmarking of this money for those specific um, programs. Mm -hmm. um, that means we cannot touch. That means yeah. the money comes in, that's what it's spent for. Yes. Yes. That's what the intent is. That's where the priority should be given per what's written in legislation. And, and it's important to note that it's uh, in terms of grants. So you, just like with any grant, there are specifications, criteria that have to be met, and that's what it is. And so it's not like we can use this money and swap it out for something else or anything like that. That money is designated for a specific purpose. And uh, frequently in the bill, in the legislation, there are definitions that are really clear to us what we can use the money for. So, and and just just a point to piggyback on what Dr. Kane had said, with this Inspector General, with this performance audit piece that's tied to this legislation, with all the other things that are going on, the accountability that everybody's asking for. I'm going to be pretty sure that if we do not follow those priorities or those recommendations or something like that, we could be subject to jeopardizing future funding. So we just want to make sure we got our I's dotted and our T's crossed as we move this funding forward. And with it being a grant, it's not guaranteed it's renewable from year to year. It could go away. Yeah, I think you'll see some of this morph into the change of the funding formulas. So they're, it's the down payment, and then the down payment, let them, let them get through with funding formula changes like special ed. Mm -hmm. That most certainly will probably go away, but it will dovetail into an increased appropriation through our regular standard funding formulas right. for special ed. And the certification for teachers, that's a teacher in our system must be certified and have all their I's dotted and T's crossed by June 30th, and we have that paperwork in showing that. Is that what that certification, or are we are you, proving certification on all of our certified teachers no, it's, already? It's, are you talking about the, the money for Under the, the teacher incentive grant? Certification must occur before June 30th, 2019. That's the certification that we're pro we're providing our teachers a 3% increase. It's that oh, certification. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Because they're okay. not going to give us the money unless we certify that. That we have certified that we have given them a 3% increase. And I certainly don't want a 2.97% increase right, and then all right. of a sudden we're on the hook for the other raised in the commissioner salary match. As a, as a concern. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Great. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Really appreciate the updates. And it's hard to get our arms around all this. <laughs> Turn that light off. Thank you. Okay, next, next item on the agenda is the open meetings uh, training. Just wanted to take about three minutes here to say that the Open Meetings Act is an act that's important that we follow. Um, we've been working hard over the last few years to try to get us in compliance completely with it. Um, they have started to do additional training on the Open Meetings Act. So everyone is, uh, should be getting the training eventually, every board member. <clears throat> and, uh, but as a minimum, the act itself requires at least one member to be designated as and, and receive open meeting law training. The, we have several people on here who have had it. Ms. Harper's had it, um, I've had it, Ms. Harlow's had it, and also just recently the superintendent went through it um, with uh, most members of our executive team. So we're all trying to make sure that we're in compliance with the particular act. It's very difficult to stay in compliance. It's how we run our meetings, but it's important that to uh, offer transparency to the public. So, but we are designating Mrs. Harlow as our um, we have a, have a designated Open Meetings Act person um, point of contact, and she's going to be the one for our board. Um, and she recently, or not too long ago, had that training too. So I wanted to um, mention that in the public venue here so you all know we are in compliance or trying to be completely in compliance with this act. Okay, the next item is the kindergarten readiness 
assessment. Welcome, Ms. Walbert. Hi. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Captain Kelly, board members, exec team, Dr. Kane. Um, for the record, my name is Susan Walbert. I'm the supervisor of early learning, Title I, Title III, and Migrant Education. Um, it is a pleasure to come to you tonight to present um, our kindergarten readiness assessment data from this year. So the purpose of um, this presentation is to provide you with an overview of our 1819 KRA scores and efforts that we have in place to support continuous improvement. So for those of you who, are, who, who don't know and, and, or need a reminder of what KR, it, KRA is, um, it is a uh, it's a look at, at, at our students' performance in four domains, language and literacy, mathematics, social foundations, and physical well-being and motor development. Um, the performance in both the academic domains of language and literacy and in also non-academic domains of social foundations and physical well-being and motor development. And these things are defined as essential to readiness by the U, um, U.S. Department of Education. So here's some good news. Um, this is a, a look at our data for the last three years, and we are a, um, a census uh, county, which means all of our students are, are assessed, which is good because then it, it gives us a, a real, uh, a nice set of data that, that our teachers can go back and really look at their class and, and see um, where their students are. So you can see in 16, 17, 45 percent of our students were demonstrating readiness. We increased to 48%, and then this year, we're at 57%. This is a, a demographic of where we are in, um, in the state, so don't look down the bottom and don't look in the middle. We're up there at the top. We're fifth from the uh, top uh, in, in our county. I, I had the pleasure of sitting in a forum and where the top uh, six counties got to share things that uh, we are doing and, and why we think our scores are, are there. So I was pretty proud um, that day to represent Queen Anne's County to say what we are, what we think um, is keeping our scores there. So the, the students get a scaled score in the domains. Um, I showed you what the highest scale score was so that you could kind of put it in perspective of where we are. In social foundations, we were actually top in the state. Um, in physical well-being, we were number one in the state. We were right dead even with the state with our language and literacy and our math was just a tiny bit um, above the state. So let's put things into perspective. So what do we do with this data? Um, my office uses this data to prioritize uh, prior care needs. So we know that um, we don't have all of our students prior to kindergarten. That's not all students um, attend pre-K. So we use this data to go back and uh, reach out to those to our prior care partners to provide professional development. Um, we visit uh, daycare centers. We've, been, we've had three prior care professional developments this year, and our last one for this year is May 16th. We started with about 17 participants, and we're now up to about 40. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a really, um, it's, it's great to see our prior care partners um, sitting in the room together and sharing ideas and learning how they can um, increase uh, language and literacy and math and social foundations and, and, and the physical well-being in, with, their, um, with, this, with the, our future students in their homes and also daycare centers. So we're really proud of the partnerships that we've built this year and will continue to do. Our pre-K teachers obviously use this data to go back and drive instruction so they can see the students that they um, taught in the previous year and it, it gives them um, some reflection time and, and some areas that, that they can increase um, the instruction. Our kindergarten teachers, obviously they, they give this assessment um, prior to them really even knowing their students. It's, it's the very beginning of September to October 13, 14, around in there. Um, so so that it starts right away, but this, this data comes back immediately. It goes into the database and it comes back immediately so they can um, go right into the database and see exactly the skills that their students need um, uh, extra work with. So what do we do? We know that 45% um, of our students attend Queen Anne's County Public Pre-Kindergarten. 
So uh, we also know that there's a lot many that, that don't. Um, we also know that 57% is a good number, and we've, we've increased our numbers, but we also know that we have many more that, that we want to make sure that we are demonstrating readiness. So as I mentioned before, we certainly are working on building those partnerships. We cannot do that alone. Um, we are continuing with our prior care partner professional development to do whatever we can to let our prior care partners know how incredibly important they are to us in preparing our students for kindergarten. Um, our pre-K teachers um, have professional development. A uh, big focus issue was on oral language. Oral language um, is a, has a direct correlation with reading success. So if we can increase that oral language, then hopefully we will um, uh, have some strong readers and, and, and students that are ready for kindergarten. Could you describe that, what that oral language? Oral language assessment? So, so, so many, so think about, um, there are students that come to school knowing, um, you know, thousands, thousands and thousands of words. And <coughs> some of our students that are in higher uh, poverty areas, or maybe our English learners might come to school knowing about 500. So, we, we really need to work um, on those on the communication and building their um, vocabulary so that they can participate in conversations and and um, and have that background knowledge. The um, oral language also assesses um, not only um, uh, the communication with the listening and the speaking, but it, it assesses when when to know when to put something into a conversation. Um, the uh, knowing that uh, if I have something and someone gives me the command to put it on top or below or beside, those kinds of words too are, are part of that oral language. Do you guys have any other questions? So you're saying the prior care, is that just daycare centers or is that home daycares as it's well? It's home daycare providers, um, daycare centers. Uh, we have a couple non-public nurseries and they've all been represented at our prior care meetings. And those that are not, we're reaching out to. Um, we have the, the Judy Center really supports us North County, um, but we also are, um, we have, we've, we've uh, built a great relationship with Kitty Academy, I can mention them. They, they've come to all of our prior care um, meetings. Um, we're working with Chesapeake College Child Care Development Center. The oral language assessment that we will give our four-year-olds, they're gonna work with us and give it to their four-year-olds as well. So we're all kind of on the same page. So we just we just know how incredibly important it is they are to us um, because we can't serve all of our all of our students. So. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take about a 10 minute break. So, be back here. We'll be back here 7:25, please. Okay, welcome back to our meeting. Um, we'll start into the action items. Um, we need a I need a motion to approve the calendar amendment that was presented by by um, Mr. Brown that extends the school year this year to June the 17th to so, make up for one um, extra in inclement weather day that we had. So moved. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the revision of the calendar, the amendment, moving the extra school day, make up day to the 17th of June. Mrs. Wright? Uh, can I have some comment? Just okay. a little discussion okay. first. I'm okay. sorry. sorry. Pardon, Mrs. Wright. So we're only doing this revision. We're not actually talking about 19, I mean, 2021 yet. When, uh, we, no. when do we do that calendar? After uh, May. Yeah. Okay. May is meeting you. after we finish the survey. Okay, thank you. Just for clarification for everybody. Yep. Okay. Thank you. This is just for this year's revision. Great. Well, members, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. I have four in the affirmative motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we added a school day to the 17th of June. Uh, next item is the African American History New Course. Yes, um, Captain Kelly, members of the board, superintendent, our recommendation is to add a new elective course uh, called African American History to our program of study. So it would be uh, an amendment to our uh, 19 and 20 program of study. Uh, this would be a new elective. 
uh, there is a need for uh, not only one additional elective courses uh, in the offering of social studies, but Mr. Tully has done a wonderful job working locally with our uh, historical society. Uh, he's worked with the Kennard Alumni Association uh, in order to put some local resources together in which students will not only study African American history as a whole, but they will really drill it down to not only African American history in Maryland, but in Queen Anne's County. Uh, and I know Mr. Tully is here and, and could answer any questions and really speak to it uh, if you would like additional information. I do have a question. Is this going to be offered at both high schools? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Not a middle school no. course. And will you, maybe not right now, but in the future, look at maybe an, a, um, an honors or an AP in that area? I'm not sure if they, the college board offers an AP. They do not. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't think College Board offers a, an AP course, um, but we could look at a designation of honors at some point. But we, we just want to get the you know, initial course in and, and open up. Great. But the current staff we have available, do we have anyone that would be able to take this extra load on, this extra course? Yes. Okay. Yes. That was my concern, make sure we had the staff. Absolutely. Is it, it's going to be uh, one of the social studies courses, or is it going to be... And Maybe and social elective. studies elective. 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 elective social okay. Yes. Any other questions? So I have to approve this course. This course. Oh, right. Okay. So I need a motion to approve the new course, African American History. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve your new course of African American History. Mrs. Wright. I call your name, Ms. Kelly. Aye. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. I have one of your motion carried. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you for your work. Thank you for bringing it to Queen Anne's County history as well. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Mr. Tully. Thank you. Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Next item is the uh, approval of the HR report. I need a motion to approve the HR report as presented in closed session. So moved. Second. Motion is second to approve the HR report as presented in closed session. Mrs. Wright. Board members again, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harwell? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. I have four of the affirmative motion carried. Okay, thank you. HR report is approved. Thank you. And we have the, oh yeah, Churchill Elementary School Chiller replacement. Ms. Good evening, Carla Pullen, Facilities Planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. <coughs> uh, I'm here this evening to request your approval on the contract for the Churchill Elementary School Chiller replacement. This is essentially a replacement in kind of the 20-year-old chiller that is there. And we are hoping to get that product on order. So as the cooling system starts up, if there's any type of major repair that's needed for this particular unit, we have something on order and on standby so that we can immediately install it if there are any problems between now and the end of the school year. If not, then the plan is to install that unit as soon as the school year is over. The week, it's the last week of June, so it will be between the time the students leave the building and our summer school student center. Okay, now that's a question. Did this go out for bid? No, this one we are utilizing a cooperative purchasing contract. So this is on the U.S. Communities contract, which is a nationally bid contract. So the pricing has been bid, but as a government entity, we're allowed to take advantage of utilizing that same bid. Um, we do recognize a 20% discount off the standard pricing that we would be getting if we were purchasing it outright and not through the contract. And then what's, who's the contractor who's going to be installing this when it's finished? This is Boland. Okay. And they're local and we've already... We've yes. used them before at Graysonville Elementary School and they maintain all of our chillers. So this price tag includes the equipment as well as their services That's to correct. install this? Crane, everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. and they're they, one of those subcontractors that was very good at um, Graysonville? Yes. But Boland didn't need to be contracted out? Boland is the one who holds the contract through U.S. Communities. Thank yes. you. Okay, thank you. And where is this being paid for? I mean, do we have the capital fund yes, for this? Yes, this is a capital was, account. 
fiscal year 2019. Okay. So in our current fiscal year. So this project was brought to the school board last, last year. year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? So I need a motion to approve the contract between Queen Anne's County Public Schools and Boland to replace the chiller at Churchill Elementary School. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to for uh, to approve the contract between Queen Anne's County Public Schools and Boland to replace the chiller at Churchill Elementary School. Mrs. Wright. Well, members again, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. I have four in the affirmative motion. Carries. Okay. Contract is approved. Thank you. Next item is probably you again. It's Ken Island High School fire alarm replacement. <coughs> yes. So I'm here this evening for another discussion of a contract approval. This was for the Kent Island High School fire alarm replacement. This was a public bid. We received bids last Wednesday. You have a copy of the bid tabulation sheet um, in your packets this evening. We only received two bidders. The low bid was through Siemens, $318,000. Siemens was not an approved manufacturer in the bid document, so therefore we technically can't accept their bid. The high bid is approximately, uh, it was through Nickel Electric and was approximately $500,000 over our budget. And we found out that that was the result of a miscommunication about how they were determining the schedule. We had given them um, much longer to complete the project than what they were anticipating and therefore their costs, the associated costs, showed on bid day. So what we would request of you this evening is to do no award for this bid. Um, and that would be your action. And that will allow us to begin the process of either rebidding or also use cooperative purchasing, another nationally bid contract that would allow us to start the work this summer. This one is time sensitive as well because we still hope to get a majority of the project done this summer just by another means other than public bid. So what you want us to do is take no action on this at all? Correct. And, and help me out, the first bidder was not on our vendor contract, our we, approved we, vendor list? Correct. Mm -hmm. We typically mm -hmm. do uh, five to seven approved manufacturers, right. and they were not one of them. Right. Um, have they ever applied to be one, or they just threw in a bid and didn't even think they about it? They threw in a bid hoping that it may get accepted, knowing that it probably would not. Well, I would encourage them to apply to become a <clears throat> vendor in the future. Yes. Thank you. Um, Ms. Why Ms. Pullen, we, can I a clarification on Ms. Harper's comment yes. about not taking action? Do we not want action of a rejection? Or are we not we take taking a vote action to at all? reject this bid. Correct. I, I think that would probably be the best. Yes. To as, opposed to no, as opposed to no action. And that will cancel. Uh, or that'll the bid negate this. Yes. Correct. Okay. But they can bid again. Yes. Yes, if the bid with is the opened right, up with different manufacturers with and they're the right included, details. they would right. be given the opportunity right. to bid, certainly. Right. So I, if I made a motion to reject the bid as presented for the Ken Allen High School uh, fire alarm replacement, that would suffice, then we'd vote on that. Absolutely. So the the we need, there's my motion. I have a question for you, though, is um, why didn't we go out to the cheaper bid process originally? We wanted to see, in some cases, there's the potential that a bid with competition will come in at a lower price. And we wanted to make sure that we were securing the best price. Now that we will reject this bid, it'll give us an opportunity to look at it in many different ways. So we can look at rebidding. We can look at cooperative purchasing. We can look at other methods as opposed to just the public bid to get those numbers back. OK. That comes down to focusing on the taxpayers money that's allotted to it so you know it's going to give us the information now to like Ms. Poulin said to look at the say a U.S. communities or some kind of cooperative, cooperative purchasing agreement <coughs> that we can tie into you know this project to get the accurate number so which you would need to be back, back to us by next month in order for it to be completed in late June, July, or August. That's the goal, and that's what we're working toward. OK. So what, what you're going to see is, remember, we have several capital projects that have money tied into it by the state. So the IAC <coughs> actually has to approve this also. They're the final um, body to vote on this. But you're also going to start seeing a lot of 
capital projects that were funded by the county commissioners for the facility assessment. Right. So those numbers and all are just coming in and different bids. And so you're going to start seeing quite a few of them popping in here because, you know, we're getting the board approval over the $25,000. So just be aware that we're going to have. Well, there's a lot to get done this summer. Many more. And we're, Signing summer contracts. We're moving away point. from building, you know, say one entire school. Now we're maintaining, you know, 14 schools. So you're going to see a lot of contracts coming through for the summertime. Okay. Okay. So. Ms. Harper, no, go ahead. Okay. So, as as what Ms. Harper said, uh, um, I need a motion to approve to reject the award for the public bid of the Kent Island High School fire alarm system replacement. So moved. Second. Second, but I'd name the vendor in that motion. But what? The vendor. I'd name the vendor in that motion, shouldn't we? That we're rejecting re whose bid we're rejecting I would say we're rejecting the bids yes yeah, so it would be from Siemens and okay. from Nickel Electric both of them, both oh, of them. okay okay so, so we, we need a motion to reject an award for the I don't know reject the bids re re no no reject the award for, reject no. the bids from Siemens and Nickel, Nickel, Electric. Nickel Electric for the Kent Island High School fire alarm system replacement okay Second. Uh -huh. There you go. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Mrs. Wright. Well, I'm Mrs. Again, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly. Yes. Ms. Harper. Yes. Ms. Harlow. Yes. Ms. Lissette. Yes. I have four um, in the affirmative to reject the bid award for Seamus and Nickel. Motion here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, expenditure reports, Mr. Fister. Yes, thank you, Captain Kelly. Members of the board, uh, before you in your in your documentation are two reports: a summary and a detailed expenditure status report for the period ending March 31st, 2019. Uh, we are on par with where we were last year. Uh, matter of fact, to even a 0.45 percent uh, differential between last year and this year. However, I do want to bring your attention that the category, as we talked about last month, of student transportation is currently over. We will notify the commissioners of such. Uh, right now, I'm not asking for any action at this point. Uh, Mr. Pinner and I did do a little bit of research, as I mentioned last week, <coughs> or last month, I'm sorry. And it, it, this is just one of those, honestly, categories that's habitually underfunded. Uh, with the increase in special ed transportation needs, it's outpacing our resources. So last year, uh, when I did some research, we actually transferred $250,000 into this account uh, above what was budgeted for FY18. This year, we've only transferred 109. So we're trying to be diligent about the dollars that we transfer. However, I can expect to see a tra or you can expect to see a transfer to um, rebalance this category uh, in May. Uh, but other than that, everything seems to be fine and on and on par. Okay, but the transfer, you don't have a transfer letter for this? Um, no, not not for this month, not for this month. I'm tr trying to minimize the amount of times that we need to bother the commissioners with approvals of transfers. So we can float this for just a, a little bit longer and we'll have one in May, which will maybe include some other end of the year type things with based on what the projections will be to get us through, Ju through June 30th. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Fister. Next item is the policies going out for the second read. Do you recall last meeting we approved the policy of policy development and its uh, associated regulation? So we have eight policies here that we're sending out or we're proposing to send out for a second read. Um, the way the policy of policies development uh, policy works, we, um, we send out for a second read and the next meeting we will actually do a final approval if, if uh, they meet the requirements. Um, before, a few months ago, we sent it out for all of these for the first read and if you recall, Mr. Farley, we had any input at all or has that already been incorporated in the second read? Um, it has been incorporated. There's been substantial reformatting and editing of all of these. Most of them were addressed last summer in summer of 2018, uh, and, and we have gone after those through the diligent work of the policy committee and our interns, so I want to thank them all. Okay. I really do appreciate the work of the policy committee on this. This is an enormous amount of work, and a lot of, uh, and the policies look much better than before. 
do any members of our committee have any input? Um, Ms. Harlow, did you have Not at this time. I'm happy to see them go out for second read. Look forward to the community input if there is any and incorporating that into the final product. Um, these are something to be proud of at this point. All of us. I don't have any to add. It's, I just am grateful for everybody that's there and helping out. Okay. So we uh, are going to just go ahead and send these out for a second read. We don't have to vote on it, but just to mention to the public, there's eight policies, employee discipline, discipline policy and employee discipline regulation, student discipline policy and the associated regulation, school health policy and its regulation, sun safety policy, and sun safety regulation, education of students with disabilities policy and its regulation, Discarding county-owned books and materials and its regulation, substance use policy and regulation, and acceptable use of electronics policy and associated regulation. So those go out for a second read on our website. Please look at them with any input you might have. So do we have any uh, more community participation? Anyone see anything? Okay. So we'll move to our future meetings and events. On April the 9th, we have from um, 5 to 8, the art scene at Queen Anne's County that was brought up by Ms. Miles. And uh, on the 11th, we have the Ken Island one, the, the same uh, art event. They sound very interesting. And that's uh, from 5 to 8. On the 10th of April, we're holding an additional school board work session from 5 to 8. The 17th of April is our normal school board work session from 11 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. On April 22nd, there's a commissioner's hearing at Bayside Elementary. April 23rd at 7 is a commissioner's hearing at the Liberty Building. And the 24th is a commissioner's hearing at Sellersville Middle School. Those three hearings are real important, as I mentioned before, for the public to attend. So any questions on the upcoming events? Captain Kelly, I don't have a question on the upcoming events, but we're tracing um, that policy development policy. And did we approve? I don't believe that we approved that final policy. We read it in our minutes. We did? Right. Okay. Yeah. We did approve. The I'm almost. Right in our second approval. We did a yeah, second read, right? We put it out for second read. So we right? should be having. So be a third. I, I, right. Yeah, I think you're right, right. Dr. King. Right. We need to. It should be done this, mm -hmm. this time. Correct. So we might need to sure, amend but, the agenda. We can redo. We can redo that. We can uh, approve that this meeting then. Yeah. That's what the desire is. Fine with me. But I thought it was already approved last time. I'm fine with that because I don't think there was, Mr. Farley, there wasn't any revisions to the policy of developing policy, was there? No. We had completed no that. We have completed right. it. So we right. really do need to take a vote on that right now. That would be helpful. Because that's going to guide these other eight. Yep. Did you have any more questions about it? No. <laughs> okay. So if well, I get the motion, but do we do we right the agenda? We need to, right. We need to amend the agenda Add to, to be sure that that is um, the approval of the policy development policy is added to the agenda. Correct. Okay. So we can add it to the agenda at this point, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Do I have a motion to um, amend the agenda to approve? To include, um, to include the policy policy um, action item. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve an amendment to the agenda to add the policy Develop uh, development, development policy mm -hmm. and the associated regulation for approval. All in, um, Ms. Wright. And for please respond as long as Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. 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 Okay, the agenda is amended. So now we'll do that, that agenda item. Um, is there a motion to approve policy for policy development and the policy for policy, the regulation for policy development? So moved. Second. And that's number 110. Correct. Yes. Okay. So we have a go ahead, Mrs. Ken, board members, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Carlo? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. Ms. 
policy development policy is approved. Uh, for the affirmative. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Kelly. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for bringing that up. Totally. Any other items that we need to discuss tonight? Okay, so I, I, I want to adjourn the open session and move into, and I need a motion to move into a closed session. For clarification, Mrs. Wright, only 3-305 for administrative function or 3-104? 104. Three dash three zero five. Thank you. Pursuant to the provisions, Article three dash three zero five, Queen Anne's County Board of Education will meet in closed session to consult with council. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and second to move into closed session to consult with council. This is right. Well, members, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly. Yes. Ms. Harper. Yes. Ms. Harlow. Yes. Is more set? Yes. I have four and affirmative motion. Okay, then I need a motion to adjourn the open session. So moved. Second. <laughs> Again, board members. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Morset? Yes. Four and affirmative. The open session is closed. We'll be convening in one session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.